What's up, guys? Welcome to the Don't Forget to Love podcast with me, Mara Sullivan. Today's episode is about all things summer, having a new month, a new season reset, thinking about the middle and second half of the year, reflecting on the first half of the year. I'll be sharing my summer favorites, what I'm doing and looking forward to, and some recommendations, books, movies, music, food, fun, all the things. First off, I have to say congratulations to the class of 2023. If you graduated or are graduating this month, high school, college, grad school, whatever level, congratulations. Enjoy your accomplishments. Celebrate yourself and all your hard work. You made it. I do not miss high school or college at all, but I did enjoy the crazy experience that I had. I have a whole episode on the best and worst things I did in college that you can check out if you haven't already. But party, celebrate, take it all in, and congratulations. Also, happy Pride Month to the LGBTQ plus community. I love you love you so much. I support you. You are 1000% welcome here. My community is all about love and having a safe space, a judgment-free zone. Enjoy this month. If you're going to pride parades, pride parties, be safe, be yourself, and have fun. I'm sending you all my love and all my support all the time, but especially this month of pride. So let's jump into all things summer. To be honest, summer is not and has and has never been my favorite season. Um, I've always had this like restless energy around summer. Last summer was the first summer that I like since I was little that I didn't feel like anxious or like I was missing out on things or needed to be doing more. It's funny because Kenzie Elizabeth, one of my favorite YouTubers, she also has a podcast. She talks about her having reversed season reverse seasonal depression where like most people get seasonal depression or winter blues in the winter months but that's how she feels every summer and I've kind of been like that I love the fall and winter pretty much October to Easter and April are my favorite months mainly because it's my like in the fall and winter is my birthdays all the holidays those are like the cozy months it's Halloween it's Christmas New Year's Valentine's Day those months are just so much fun for me I do enjoy the summer weather, though. I love being able to wear shorts and dresses and not having to wear a coat, hat, scarf, gloves, like all the winter equipment. Like I said, last year was like the first summer. I just wasn't worried about what I was doing, what I wasn't doing. I didn't feel like I was missing out on partying or being at the beach all the time or taking a vacation. I prefer traveling at the end of the summer or early fall, basically any month (laughs) except July. I feel like most places are super crowded and super hot in July because it's the like busiest month for travel and for vacations like besides Christmas and stuff Um, and so like I just prefer to just wait um, before I travel until like later in the summer early fall but all that being said there are so many fun things about summer so I'm gonna talk about my summer essentials some recommendations my favorite summer movies things I'm doing my summer plans and resetting for this new month and new season of summer 2023 I've heard a lot of girls say that the term like hot girl summer makes them feel more pressure to be doing all the things and have the perfect summer and the perfect body. I think hot girl summer was a lot of fun when it first came out. You guys know, remember like how huge it was a couple years ago when like Meg Thee Stallion made it super popular and the phrase just kind of took off. But like, I feel like now people aren't as hyped about having a hot girl summer anymore. Maybe it's just dying out. But also, like I said, I've seen a lot of posts about girls just saying it makes like it puts more pressure on them. And so I've decided this summer I'm having a smart girl summer. I'm working. I'm saving money. I'm not doing things I'll regret the next day. Maybe one or two bad decisions. You know, it's summer and I'm 24 and I'm still a hot girl. So naturally there has to be some craziness. But overall, I'm having a smart girl summer. I'm not trying to impress anyone on social media. I'm not feeling left out or like I need to be partying hard or drinking more or doing more. I'm not throwing my health out the window just because it's summer. I'm still having a ton of fun just in my own way, doing what I um, love to do, doing what I want to do, how I want to do it, making fun memories to look back on and just enjoying my life without getting crazy or overdoing it. I'll still be reading books and just doing more of what I love and what makes me happy. And remembering also, if you're like me or like 
I said, like Kenzie described having like reverse seasonal depression where like summer is not your favorite season or you feel more down in the summer. It also helps to just remember that summer is basically just the month of July. Like, let's be honest, summer is like a month long. It has kind of June and it's kind of August, but like the real like summer is July. And so it's basically a month long. So that takes a lot of pressure off when you put things into perspective. So smart girl summer it is for me this year. I'm still a hot girl, but I'm a smart girl too who's working hard, growing a brand and a community of other hot smart girls too. And guys, all are welcome here. Um, so when I reset for a new month, I like to look back over the previous month. So look back over May, what, think about what you did, um, were, were there things that I wanted to do but I didn't do. I also like to go all the way back and look at my overall goals for the year. Where am I? How am I doing so far? What have I accomplished? What do I still need to get done? What don't I care about doing anymore? Our goals change throughout the year as we change and grow and get exposed to new things and get new ideas and have new interests. How we see things um, can also change. How we feel about certain things can change. Um, Things you wanted back in December or January, you might not want anymore. And there are probably some things that you want or want to do now that you didn't want to do back at New Year's. And so the beginning of the month is a good time to reflect and reevaluate what you want to do, where you are and what you're doing and what you want to do so that you're making progress towards um, those things as the year progresses. When we get to December, we want to look back on this year and be proud of the things that we did or didn't do, have some new memories to look back on, embrace you know all the ups, all the downs that we might have faced, and just not feel like time completely got away from us or we have no idea what we actually did. For me, May was super busy. I feel like I worked every single day straight through the month. I did take off for Preakness Week weekend and I had Memorial Day off as well which was nice I usually work weekends and holidays so I did take those off if you listen to my last episode you heard me talk about Preakness it is the horse race that's held here in Maryland every year I cannot tell you a thing about horses or betting on the races I solely went for Bruno Mars he was the headliner for the post race performance and he was so good I I have to see him in person again It wasn't even a full concert, and it was still one of the best live shows I've ever been to. It was pouring rain, um, but that actually made it more fun and made it more special and more memorable. I got to see family who visited from out of town. For Memorial Day, I went to see The Little Mermaid. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it as soon as you can. Buy your ticket right now as you're listening to this. Holly Bailey is incredible. Melissa McCarthy is so amazing. It was, it's really well done. It definitely had every element of, you know, that Disney magic. And it's just great and obviously such an important moment for Black history and current Black culture. I had fun with my mom for Mother's Day. So those were like my May highlights. Some of the not so great stuff or the things that I can work on for this month is definitely sleep. I did not sleep great for a lot of last month because it was so busy. And like I said, I worked a lot more than I normally do. It was just a busy month work-wise. I did not work out as much last month. I like to do my treadmill at least every day or as close to every day as possible. But that definitely did not happen in May. So I have been um, back on my routine so far this month also weightlifting um, I follow Juice and Toya on YouTube if you want to weightlift I recommend following their videos they're super beginner friendly and they have really good strength training workouts um, they go all the way from beginner to advanced and so I love their videos and following them and they're like you know super easy to do and it's a really good workout like your body will feel it <laughs> like they're really really good um My goal is to do those two to three times a week. Food nutrition wise, I was I was pretty good last month. Nothing crazy. I was eating later at night, which I don't like to do. You guys know I love intermittent fasting. So I didn't do that often last month, but I was but what I was eating wasn't bad. My body just feels better or worse depending on how early or late my last meal is. So June for me will be a bit of a health and wellness reset. 
Um, this is only the first. We're headed headed into the second week of June, and I've already gotten more sleep. I've uh, walked on my treadmill a lot, and I haven't been eating late into the evening. I have to plan my weightlifting days because that really has to be like planned around my meals for me because it's harder on my body than cardio. I can do cardio fasted. I prefer working out on an empty stomach, but when it comes to weightlifting, I feel better if I've eaten like some good, substantial, nutrient-dense food first. Nothing super heavy, but things like a banana, which is great for muscles, or like sweet potato, protein, healthy carbs, healthy fat. If you're focusing on your, quote, summer body, which I know this is the time of year, people feel the most pressure to look perfect or as close to perfect as possible. We're all wearing less clothes, bathing suits, bikinis, dresses, short skirts, legs out, arms out, stomach, crop tops, whatever you like to wear. And there's always pressure on so many people to slim down for summer. Remember that the goal should be to be healthy and love your body and be at a healthy weight for um, your body all the time, all year, not just one or two months of the year. You don't have to wait until you have the perfect body or you reach all your goals to wear what you want and show off your body and love your body as it is right here, right now. But if you are trying to hit um, some new body goals this season, of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just sharing what works for me. Do what works for you and it makes you feel your best. Upping my protein has been a game changer. Instead of eating just two eggs when I have eggs, I now have like three or four. I don't eat eggs every single day, maybe like two or three times a week, but I don't just have two of them when I eat eggs. I've also been loving grass-fed ground beef, salmon. It's summer, and so seafood is a <laughs> big deal here in Maryland, of course. I love grilled shrimp and veggies. Um, it, shrimp is also like a good source of protein. Just focusing on real, whole, fresh foods. Whole foods are the foods that are themselves, that one ingredient. Nothing has been added to it. Obviously, fruits and vegetables as they are without things added to them or um, like a version of the thing. Real, whole potatoes or sweet potatoes, fresh fish or meat that isn't already seasoned. You can do it yourself and control how much salt or sauce or whatever you like to add. Buying things plain as they are and then seasoning it yourself helps a lot because you can control the ingredients. The reason a lot of health experts say to avoid processed food and eating out every day is because there are tons of added sodium, added sugar, oils, dyes, chemicals, gums, just a ton of unnecessary ingredients that we don't need to be consuming. So just really um, try to focus on real nutritious whole foods as much as possible. Remember, as good as Doritos and Cheetos and candy are, they are not food. You can have them occasionally if you really want to, but focus on real food that's good for your body and will make it feel good. I also love intermittent fasting. As I said before, you can pick your eating windows. For me, I like to stop eating early evening. I always feel like crap if I eat too late into the evening or late at night. And so I try... I uh, try not to most nights of the week. Of course, once or twice a week, I'll be out with friends or something. And so it's not every single night, but more often than not, I stop eating early evening. Make sure you're drinking as much water as possible every day, especially if you're out in the heat. A lot this summer, add electrolytes if you need more hydration. I love nectar electrolytes. It's it has clean ingredients. I get them off of Amazon in their packets so I can just take them like on the go. I also love fresh juice juices, again, without a ton of sugar or things added to them are really good. Same with smoothies. The more you can make from home, the better. This month for me, like I said, will all will be all about, you know, staying consistent with my healthy routines, nutrition, fasting, exercise and sleep. And of course, as much water as possible every day. I also have some extra days off this month because I worked overtime last month. So hopefully I'll be able to get more of these episodes up for you guys. Definitely more than last month. I'm really focusing on creating more content and on like I'm really focusing on uh, creating more content this summer, so DM me or comment on any of my Instagram or Lemonade posts and let me know 
what you guys want me to talk more about. I know the health and wellness lifestyle content is my most popular right now, and so I'll make sure that I tie that into most of my episodes, things like healthy hacks for busy lives, things that work for me and for my body and help me feel and look my best. I post a lot on the new social media app, Lemon 8, so if you're looking for more content from me, definitely check me out on there. I pretty much post on there every single day. My handle is the same as my Instagram at Mara P. Sullivan, and the app is Lemon8, the word lemon and the number eight. Instagram has never been that much fun from that much fun for me I still post on there like here and there but not a lot TikTok has never been my thing I just prefer taking pictures over video which is why I love Lemon 8 so much as far as my summer plans besides posting more content being more consistent in my health and wellness I'll be going to a few concerts if you're going to or have already been to renaissance Beyonce's tour definitely let me know how it was I'll be going this summer I'm super excited I saw her on the formation tour so I'm really excited to see her again the Kardashians are back finally I actually don't watch them weekly even though you guys know I love the show I like to let them stack up and then binge watch like like towards the end of the season you know when they're done or almost done so I haven't watched it yet if you watch the Kardashians and are a fan of the show or the family I highly recommend checking out the comments by celebs podcast the hosts Emma and Julie recap each Kardashians episode and do really good celebrity pop culture like current events they also recap housewives Vanderpump rules it's like listening to your best friends talk about your favorite celebrities and it's one of my top five favorite podcasts comments by celebs I love it the new season of The Bachelorette is also coming out later this month. I believe it's the last Monday in June. Of course, it's always on a Monday night. I go back and forth which with the Bachelor franchise. It depends on like who the, the Bachelor or Bachelorette is. The last season I watched straight through was Matt James, who started off pretty good but kind of <laughs> went downhill. I feel like that's how... You know, every season goes for The Bachelor or Bachelorette. I can't believe this show had been on for 25 years and Matt was the first black bachelor. Like, that is insane. I also watched Peter Webster's season straight through, a.k.a. Pete the Pilot. I love Peter. He was, like, so hot but ended up being, like, just ridiculous it's hilarious because the last two girls on his season were hannah ann and maddie pruitt and peter basically ended up not wanting either one of them and now both of them are happily married and living their best lives and so it was his loss i love both of them Hannah Ann just got engaged to the NFL football player, Jake Funk, I think, yeah, Jake Funk. Um, He played for the LA Rams. He was actually on their team when they won the Super Bowl, which is amazing, which, you know, she definitely found her person. Now I think he's with the Colts, and I only care because Jake is actually from here. He played at University of Maryland, and it's always crazy to me, like, how small the world is, and... I love Hannah Ann. I never really like any of the Bachelor or Bachelorette girls, but I loved her and Maddie from Pete's season. Fun fact, also related to this being a very small world, one of my favorite YouTubers, Janine Amapolo, who I've literally been watching for like 10 years on YouTube, um, she and Maddie Pruitt our best friends in real life they were roommates until maddie just got married a few months ago so all that to say they ended up it ended up being peter's peter's loss they were both so upset when peter did not choose either one of them on that season a couple years ago but they both got the men that they were supposed to be with so remember when one door closes another one always opens I'm going to watch at least the first episode of the new season of The Bachelorette. Charity Lawson is the new Bachelorette. She's black. I always like to support all of them, especially the black ones. And so I basically will watch until I get annoyed. That's what I do every season. (laughs) And it doesn't take long for it to get super annoying, but hopefully the season will be good. And I hope that she finds love and has found the one that she is looking for.
Moving on to some of my favorite summer things and summer essentials, recommendations. You guys know I love black coffee and I avoid like sugary creamers and Starbucks drinks as much as possible. But at least like three or four times throughout the summer, I will have a Frappuccino. And my favorite summer Starbucks Frappuccino is the Affogato. I think that's how you pronounce it. Affogato style vanilla bean frappuccino. Most people know about the vanilla bean frapp, but the affogato style is a shot of espresso poured over the frappuccino, and it is literal heaven. Like, it is so good. It's like coffee ice cream, but a thousand times better, especially if you're like me and you don't like super sweet drinks and you still want your coffee to taste like coffee. Like, it is literally divine, and it it tastes so French and so much like a real specialty like coffee dessert. It is my favorite treat. I also like the iced brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso. It has the longest name ever, but it's really good. Other than that, I love my regular iced black coffee or cold brew. I prefer iced coffee over cold brew, but they're both good. Of course, recess is my favorite non-alcoholic, fun, fizzy drink. It's so relaxing. It's so calming. I talk about recess all the time. Um, It has like sparkling wine vibes and it's healthy and it's so, so good and so good for you. Um, That is my my go to recess drink is the blood orange flavor, but they have a ton of different flavors. I think I, I just tried the peach ginger flavor and so and it's really, really good. I think I might like that more now than the blood orange but those two are definitely really really good and it's like poured over ice it's just the perfect summer drink especially if you don't like alcohol or don't like to drink too much like me um also I love like an iced tea but like an actual tea bag like tea bag tea (laughs) with ice put um with ice put in it or um putting it in the fridge to let it get cold it's one of my favorite things i don't drink often i have alcohol probably twice a month max and only when i go out but um mocktails are really great if you don't like drinking or you want to cut back pineapple juice is my favorite juice in the world you can literally like mix it with anything i like pineapple juice and ginger ale it is amazing I feel like most things mixed with ginger ale are really good. Um, I also love cranberry juice. You can also mix that with pretty much anything. That's a really good juice too. Smoothies are the best in the summer because all the fruit is in season. Making smoothies is fun to do or to buy in the snow- the summer. Smoothie King is my go-to because I know the ingredients are clean and you know they don't have like a ton of added sugar and stuff. I love Cold Stone ice cream. It is also one of my summer staples. I have to have Cold Stone. I said it before and I felt like it's, I was saying like Cold Slaw. Like I said it to my mom and she thought I was saying Cold Slaw. Cold Stone ice cream is so good. I have to have it at least two to three times throughout the summer. I love the one with the golden Oreos and there's also one with the chocolate chip like cookie at the bottom and it's so good there are definitely indulgences but they are so worth it and it's definitely a summer must have for me water obviously is super important in the summer because of the heat and electrolytes especially if you're planning to be outside in the sun a lot like i said before i love nectar electrolytes um you can get them on amazon the ingredients are clean If you want to get more into the spirit of summer, I suggest making a summer mood board. You can make a physical, um, like mood board, one on or one on Pinterest, whatever you like to use. Put your favorite summer things on there. What you want to do this summer, the places you want to go, pictures that capture your summer vibe, the clothes you want to wear, your favorite summer drinks, snacks, food, movies. My favorite summer movie of all time is Aquamarine. I basically know the whole movie by heart. I watched it so much when I was younger. I also love The Parent Trap. I love Cheetah Girls. Uh, Cheetah Girls 2 is like the summer one. I love that one. It's also the best one in my opinion. High School Musical 2 is obviously like a great summer movie. Um, I also love the old movie Splash with Tom Hanks. It is hilarious. It's like the original Aquamarine. You can also look up what movies are coming out this summer that you want to go see. Um, 
I kind of want to see You Hurt My Feelings. That's coming out. The Barbie movie is also coming out. I have zero interest in the Barbie movie, but for some reason, I really think I'll like it. I'm just really into pink right now, so that's probably why. And I'm into like baby pink specifically, and so I think that it'll just be super like aesthetically cute to me. If nothing else, I know that there will be a lot of pink. Um, I want to watch The Perfect Find with Gabrielle Union that's coming out on Netflix later this month. Elemental is also coming out. It's the new Disney movie. It looks like Inside Out, which I loved, and so I definitely want to see that. The new Indiana Jones movie is also coming out, Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise is literally aging backwards. Like, (laughs) it's crazy. Like, he is hot. I love Tom Cruise, and I feel like a Mission Impossible just came out. Yeah. Like, he just did one recently, but there's another one coming out. So, make your summer mood board. What do you want to do this season? Are there any movies you want to see or watch? Do you want to have, like, a party girl summer or a small beach town girl summer or both? I love swimming, so the pool is always perfect. I also love amusement parks. Six Flags is the main one here. Um, Eating crabs during the summer is a big thing here in Maryland. I love also cookouts. There's nothing better than a grilled burger or a grilled hot dog or steak and some chips. It is the best summer vibe. Also, think think about the 4th of July. I love fireworks, and so I always try to, like, at least see the fireworks every year. Um... You know, eating outside when you can, having fun bar nights. If that's your thing, I love a classic margarita and chips at like a Mexican bar. It is the best, especially in the summer. Outdoor festivals are also a lot of fun. Maryland has the AFRAM every year. It's the African American festival. There's always like black owned vendors, um, a lot of shopping, black owned like food and chefs and stuff. Great entertainment, great performers. We also have Artscape here. And I think both of those travel. And so you can see if either one is like coming to your area. Um, But Artscape is a big art festival that highlights local artists. If you're looking for beach reads, Um, or like summer romance books, or just summer books in general. Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand is a summer must read. It has literally like everything you can want in a beach read or in like a really good summer book. Um, It has a great Um, scandal plot and it's a real place hotel nantucket you can actually go there which is really cool especially if you're a fan of the book i definitely want to go there i cannot wait to go to nantucket i've always wanted to go there since i was little there's another book i think it's by sarah Dessen, and one of her books takes place on nantucket and i remember reading that when i was like 13 12 or 13 and just falling in love with nantucket and so i still want to go there it's still on my list i haven't been yet but i cannot wait to go I just finished reading Things We Hired from the Light by Lucy Score. It's the sequel to Things We Never Got Over. I loved both of those books. I'm currently reading another one of her books called Pretend Your Mind. No, pre- yeah, Pretend Your Mind. If you still haven't read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, that is a must read. It is the perfect summer book as well. I've seen the movie Eat, Pray, Love, but I want to read the book because I know it's such a classic, so I'm definitely definitely going to do that this summer. If you're into romance, Nicholas Sparks' books are, of course, great summer reads. A lot of his books and movies take place in the summer or have, like, beach town settings. The Notebook, The Last Song, Message in a Bottle, Every Breath is incredible. I love his books so much more than the movies. The movies are too mushy. The Books are romance, but they still have like other themes and plot lines throughout. I always say people who hate Nicholas Sparks books have nine times out of ten only seen the movies. Like if people who hate Nicholas Sparks and ju- say that they hate Nicholas Sparks have only seen the movies most of the, most of the time. Um, the last song and the Notebook movies are really good, but even those are not as good as the books. <laughs> the books are better. Um, So yeah, that is it for my summer recommendations, my favorite summer things, resetting for a new month. Remember to look back over your goals and reassess, reevaluate, start planning what you want 
the summer and the second half of the year to look like for you. And that is it for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to rate and and review this podcast. Share this episode. Make sure you're following this podcast and have it saved to your library so that you don't miss any episodes from me. DM me anytime with questions and topics you want me to cover. My Instagram is at Mara P. Sullivan. I post content on you can also find me at the same handle at Mara P. Sullivan on Lemon 8. I post content on there just about every single day. I love creating content on there, so definitely check it out. Remember, no matter how crazy this summer may get for you, sit back, relax, and enjoy it all. And do not forget to love. And do not forget we're having a hot but smart girl summer this year. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.